There are two extra keywords in the shell programming language that are used to control the execution of a loop. And when I say a loop, I mean actually any kind of loop, not just the while loop. They can also be used in conjunction with the for loop. Those keywords are break and continue. So let's have a look at them. We'll firstly look at the break. Using the word break is a way to actually cause a loop to immediately terminate. Sometimes having a single termination condition at the beginning of a loop is not enough. Sometimes you need to have several termination conditions. There may be several situations in which you want to break out of a loop. So you can put the main one at the top of the loop, like while such and such is true, and then inside the loop you could have perhaps a series of if statements. If this situation is true, then break. In other words, terminate the loop. It's a very useful little uh, option at our disposal. Continue is kind of the opposite. It will actually cause us to go around the loop again. In other words, any remaining code in the code block just simply gets skipped. We go around the loop one more time and the loop condition right at the top of the loop, the while such and such is true, does in fact get retested. So the continue is simply a way of skipping a bunch of code, skipping the code that follows the continue line inside the code block of the loop. I think the best thing to do at this point is to have a look at an example. So let's do that. This block of code assumes that the user has just typed in some data into a variable called file name, and you can see that the last line of the loop is getting them to read another uh, file name as well. So effectively we'll continue to go around this loop while the user continues to type something in response to the read command. So what does a loop actually do? Well, it assumes that the file name that they typed in is supposed to be a directory. So the very first thing that we do is we test to see whether it is. And if it's not a directory, then we simply continue. Which means that we skip everything after the word continue all the way down to the done and go right back around to the while file name. Now the sharp people amongst you may see that we've actually got a bit of a problem here because what we would want to do just before we continue is read the name of the next file name or the next directory name to test. Otherwise we're going to have an infinite loop because we'll just go round and round the loop and we'll say while file name and that will still be set so we'll go and say okay is it a directory and it still won't be a directory and we'll just go around and keep doing those two tests over and over again because the file name variable is not changing so if you like that's a little bug in this little code snippet nevertheless the principle is correct and the principle is that if it is not a directory then simply skip whatever processing is involved next by use of the continue statement. So if we get past the continue statement, if we get to the phi and the next if, then we must have a directory at this point. So now we can do a little ls of that directory, pipe the results to wc-l, which will give us the number of files in that directory. Now we enclose all that in backwards quotes, so let's say there are 25 files in that directory. What it, the, the uh, the backwards quotes and everything inside them gets substituted with the number 25 so we simply do a test if 25 is greater than 100 which in that case it wouldn't be but if it was if we ended up with 125 then maybe that's some termination condition that's some error if we ever get to a very very large directory then we stop processing altogether so we would echo out a message to that effect we are stopping there was a huge directory huge being contents greater than 100 and we break. We don't read any more information, we don't go around the loop again, we don't do any more testing, we just simply continue on with the next line of code after the word done, if there are any. So, assuming that we make it past the continue, which means that it is definitely a directory, and we make it past the break, which means it wasn't a huge directory, then we can process that directory as normal. So, Obviously there would be some code in there at that point that does whatever we need to do with this particular directory. So in general, I guess you could say that the continue is used to skip over invalid situations in a loop and make sure that we only process valid ones. 
while the break is used to terminate the loop altogether should some termination condition arise other than the one right at the very top of the loop. So that's about it. Break and continue. They're not actually that uh, complicated. It's just a matter of getting used to their 